and you turn at your lowest point to fitness. Despite being in that in that bad headspace and that that rock bottom environment, the only thing that kept me sane was, you know what, even though I'm homeless, I'm gonna still try and compete. You know, in your story, you you teach us two things: perseverance and hope, like not giving up, like in your darkest hours, go for it. I also love the fact that you use fitness to do it. I consider today's guest an artist helping to sculpt the bodies of Hollywood's largest celebrities, including Sylvester Stallone, Zac Efron, John Leguizamo, Jamie Foxx, Josh Brolin, and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Aaron Williamson is an American actor, a world-renowned fitness trainer, and most importantly, a U.S. Marine Corps veteran. Hey, Aaron, welcome to On Call with Dr. Dave. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us and the viewers. I appreciate it. It's good to be on with you guys. You have an amazing story. I, I feel like a little bit of a stalker. I went on your website. I've been reading about you a lot. And I think from what I'm hearing and reading, and I looked at some of your interviews, to me, what drives you? Everything can be explained by your experience in the military, at least from me. And I think that probably also explains why you're able to achieve this elite status. But what I found so fascinating about your story is you go into the military, you go into the Marines, you go overseas, you're in these incredibly dangerous missions, you serve your country beautifully, you come back and you're a disaster. You have post-traumatic stress disorder, you're living out of your car, you're not working steady jobs, and you turn at your lowest point to fitness. Tell me about that. How did you get out of this rut using fitness? So I got, I got bit by the, the fitness bug when I was deployed to Okinawa, Japan. And, and I was on Camp Schwa back in 1999. And uh, I had this goal that was to become a professional bodybuilder. And I, I started to embark on that goal, but being in the, in the service, it's not conducive to that type of lifestyle because it's very, very, very structured and the Marine Corps is all about mission first. So kind of fast tracking when I got out of the Marine Corps and finished overseas work, you know, I, I landed flat on my face in New Orleans with a completely failed transition plan. And my comfort would have been to go back overseas, you know, because that's what was comfortable to me. That's what was normal to me. That became my new normal because I was there for such a long time. But having had so many friends and family talk me out of it, I was like, all right, well, I'll take their advice and, and try and do something with fitness because at the core of who I am, it's Marine Corps and fitness. So I found this uh, 24 hour gym uptown New Orleans and uh, started personal training. I was homeless at the time and uh, despite being in that, in that bad headspace and that, that rock bottom environment, the only thing that kept me sane was, you know what, even though I'm homeless, I'm gonna still try and compete. So I kept my head in the game by prepping for the Mr. New Orleans bodybuilding competition, which was a local show. And in my mind, I felt like if I can come out of this and win this show and be Mr. New Orleans, I can start to rebrand myself as something new and also kind of get my name out in the community through fitness because New Orleans is not known to be a very fit place. So I was kind of embarking on this new this new goal now. And in, in the meantime, what happened was I fell in the middle of the film industry. So a lot of things kind of simultaneously happened, but it, it goes back to, uh, you know, occasionally I'll say, if you just stay true to the things that you love, some doors will eventually open of some sort or some opportunity will be there. And that's kind of what I lived off of is just that hope and faith that that would happen. And sure enough, it did. Man, I love that because, you know, in your story, you, you teach us two things, perseverance, and hope, like not giving up, like in your darkest hours, go for it. I also love the fact that you use fitness to do it. And I think probably a lot of people right now, whatever bad situation they're in, they can absolutely use fitness to get them out of it, you know, get yeah. some confidence. Yeah, I agree with that, especially in, in the time we're in right now, the, in this COVID era, I keep hearing a lot about people say, I put on the COVID-15 and I'm, on my mind, I'm like, how did you put on 15 when you had so much time to just kind of focus on 
a little bit more of taking care of yourself. But again, it's, it's me going through what I went through in that, in that rock bottom situation where I'm kind of programmed like that, whereas a lot of people may not have that programming in to take that, that rock bottom and do something with it. Yeah, totally. You know, as a cardiologist and, you know, I see a lot of patients every day and going into the hospital, you know, I see the fitness as something where it could save your life because we know obesity and being out of shape and diabetes, all these things that go along with being out of shape, put you at high risk of succumbing or dying from COVID. So I've been using that with me and my patients say, Hey guys, we got to rally until we can get this thing under control. Yeah. If there's anything we've learned about COVID along the way, it's, it's uh, definitely your health is very important. Totally. Yeah, absolutely.